Welcome to Unstoppable Podcast with Harry Sardinas, inspiring conversations with influential millionaires, investors, thought leaders, entrepreneurs who are making a massive difference with their innovative products and services and sharing the challenges and wisdom of how they sold their first million. How would you like to achieve your first million? And today we're connecting from London to United States and we're going to be talking about how people can find you because if you have a business and you need to achieve 1 million in sales, if people cannot find you online, it's going to be very difficult. So, Brandon, can you please open your mic and introduce yourself? My name is Brandon Leibowitz and I have been involved with digital marketing since 2007. I got my degree in business marketing, and after I graduated I, from university, got my first job helping companies do digital marketing, which I didn't really know much about it back in 2007, and the company I worked at said, we don't know much either. We're going to take you to classes and kind of learn alongside with you, so I decided to give that a shot, and after working there for a few months, just realized this is the future. Everyone's going to have a website, and SEO is just a way to get free traffic. And that got me going to think that everyone's going to want free traffic in the future. And maybe I should just stick with this digital marketing thing. And I did that over the years, working at different advertising agencies as a director of SEO. And before work and after work and on my lunch breaks, I'd work on my own company and eventually built that up to where I was able to quit my job and been doing that ever since, just helping people tap into that free traffic from Google. So why you, do you decide to quit your job and become an entrepreneur? I mean, like a director of marketing of SEO for a company, you get paid very good, right? It's very comfortable life. Why you drop your secure job to do something really risky, which is start your own business? What happened? I've always had an entrepreneurial spirit and always knew I wanted my own company one day. had a clothing company in, in high school that I started selling skateboarding clothes and Always knew I wanted to do something with entrepreneurial and just didn't know what it was. And then after I graduated from college, that first job I got was doing SEO. And I realized after I went to some of these conferences that they took me to that everyone was talking about like they work full time or they would have like 10 different websites doing affiliate marketing and drop shipping and all this stuff. And it made me realize that I could work full time at this company doing their SEO and I could go to a local business like a, a restaurant, which is not a direct competitor and do their SEO. So I was getting some income here or there. And then after doing it for a while, I realized maybe I should really push the freelance stuff and really go all in. And that's when I just decided I don't have enough time to do both working full time and doing the freelance. And I like the freedom and flexibility that I have having my own business, even though I work much, much more, but at least I'm able to pick and choose when I want to work. And it lets me have that flexibility to travel if I wanted to and things like that, which I could do at my old job, but it's just not as not as flexible, very much more limited. So Brandon, what's your message for all these people out there that say, oh, what's the point to invest in SEO? At the end of the day, Google owns the algorithms and this search engine owns the algorithms and then change the algorithms every time they want. And one day you can be number one and can one day you can be number 100 because they own the algorithms and they, they have the free will to share at any time. So what message that you have for these people that said that SEO is not that important because we don't have the control. The control is is from the search engine provider. Well, you get control by putting keywords in your code or on your website. That way Google can better read and understand your website. And you have control with building trust because Google ranks websites that they trust. So you can influence how Google trusts you and how Google looks at you to make sure that you rank for those keywords. That's what SEO is all about, is making sure that Google ranks you in the organic, the free listings, and there's 10 spots on that first page of Google. And Google's always changed their algorithm, but as long as you do what they want, which is show them that you're a trustworthy, reliable, credible, and authoritative website, and that you have the right keywords in the coding in the right, correct places, Google's going to reward you with that traffic. But you're not doing the right things, then Google's not going to reward you. But SEO is still very valid because people search on Google. And if you're not ranked there, someone else has taken that traffic away from you. 100%, right? 
But then in the at the at the end, Brandon, the um the because that's true, right? Even that the algorithm changed, right? Google and all these search engine wants a uh, one always the same result, right? They want to put in front of the user the most relevant page, right? For the search term that, that people wrote there. And and obviously, regardless that they changed this algorithm actually to make sure that they can show the most relevant page, right? That's the reason why they changed the algorithm, right? So if if the strategy around the website had been designed to actually um, be relevant for the for the trends or for the keywords that that this specific company want to target, obviously you're gonna have a big chance to to appear in Google, right? So how about some people that say, well, uh, what's the point to 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 pay for an SEO company if I can advertise it and I can be on the top and uh, and it's gonna cost me less? I don't know if it's going to cost you less. Depends on what keywords, because Google Ads can be pretty expensive, especially in the search engine, right? <laughs> so yeah, some each click. So if you search on Google and you click on an ad, those companies are paying Google per click. It could be a couple cents per click. It could be a couple dollars per click. It could be a hundred dollars for one click. So as long as they're making yeah, more than you're putting yeah, in, there's no the reason industry, to stop yeah, it. And how competitive in this industry, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The more competition, the more expensive it becomes. And at the end of the day, the same thing, right? At the end of the day, um, Google also um, is uh, the way that they do this, right? Is is they, they, they reward the highest bidder. Right? So... If the certain keyword is really competitive, let's say bank, for example, a bank, right? Uh, that they have a lot of money and, and they have, um, uh, they, they are very interested in specific keywords, right? Um, these become really, really expensive. I would be very good idea to, to invest in SEO. I think that the SEO, when it's done properly, um, can give you um, a more, 360 um, degrees appearance because let's face it, yeah, people think that SEO is only Google, but it's not only Google, it's Google, Google Images, Google News. Uh, people can find you in so many different ways, right? I think you type my name in Google and you go to images, you will find hundreds and hundreds of photos of me. Uh, this is not a coincidence, has been <laughs> designed in, in the SEO way. So this outcome happens, right? And the same way that, you know, somebody type my name in Google, you will find uh, pages and pages and pages and pages and pages with, with our name on it, right? Which is part of the, the um, a well, well designed SEO strategy, right? So how good do you think that um, in terms of architecture, right? And how seriously do you think that entrepreneurs out there should be um, uh, taken in consideration to improve the SEO strategy because actually it's something that um, that changed a lot, right? It changes on a daily basis. Google yeah. is always updating their algorithm, trying to just figure out how to provide the best results and provide the best user experience. I remember Brandon that before backlinks used to be the golden goose for the SEO, and everybody was creating. All these backlinks, I I hear that now they're not that relevant. Actually, if you abuse from them too much, the algorithm can actually pick up and, and penalize you. Yeah. Yep, you got to build the right type of backlinks. It's all yeah. about quality, not quantity. But backlinks are still a very big part of Google's algorithm. Where is it? Okay. I don't think I've ever seen a website rank without backlinks. <laughs> Backlink is. Just a clickable link from another website that points to yours. So the more websites that are related to what you're doing that link out to you, the more popular, the more trust Google gives to you exactly. and the higher they're going to rank you. But without those backlinks, Google's not going to trust you and they're not going to rank the website that they don't trust. Google said they're not looking at backlinks as much, but Google lies. You can't trust Google. Google is not going to tell you what really works because... That's yeah. going to disincentivize you and you're not going to spend any IP, Yeah, if somebody find out. <laughs> yeah. And then the um, the thing is, um, what do you think that people that want to 
that that doesn't take SEO seriously and take shortcut rather than hire a professional like you, right? What would be the negative impact of that? It depends on if you have time to learn SEO. If you want to learn SEO as a business owner, great, go for it if you have time, but it is like <laughs> new skill. Yeah. To learn, yeah. And let me mm. tell you something. If you make a mistake on a shortcut, uh, Google can penalize you and can disappear. <laughs> your, your website can be in the end. So I know a lot of people without having the right knowledge, right? That try to try to cut, uh, to do shortcuts in terms of SEO. There are people there that will sell you some kind of softwares that, oh, if you put this website, this software is gonna give you this and it will rank you first in Google and this and that. And all these type of softwares and things like that, yeah, but they can work for a while until Google find out. And trust me, they will find out. <laughs> and once they find out what's going on, the 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 bad news that you get penalized and and uh, and and those this credibility, this trust that your website should have, is actually uh, uh, goes away, right? Yeah, we don't want that to happen. That's the last thing we want to happen. Is Someone to get penalized because just like Google could rank you, they could also drop you down very quickly. And if you do the wrong things, like build the wrong type of backlinks, or if you try to hide keywords in your content, like maybe you put in font size 0 0.001, a bunch of keywords on your website and you make it in white text. So it blends in with your white background. Google sees that they're going to penalize you. So just do anything, do anything that seems too good to be true or too easy because oh, Google's been around for a long right, time yeah. and they have seen it all. So we can't trick Google. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And a lot of people try to do shortcuts and and they, they think that, you know, you can, oh, this is strategy. Exactly like you said, You're, they, they put white background on the right white letters and in order to get more relevant. Google will find out because at the end of the day, they want the most relevant page to become the first. And this is the ultimate goal. And it doesn't matter how much they change the algorithm, that's the end outcome they want to. If you type holidays in Hawaii, Google wants to show you the best website that can provide you the holidays in Hawaii, the most uh, trusted website, the more a website that has more reviews, more trust, more links associated, and a, a more general and positive experience. And you can create this uh, out of the website by by having good SEO practices and good SEO policy. Is that correct? Yeah, by having a good quality set up, good foundation set up, that's going to make Google to really trust you and rank you in the search results. Okay, Brandon, and this is a question that everybody wants to hear from you. What are the five steps that every entrepreneur should be doing out there to achieve the first million in sales? Let's say get a mentor, having somebody okay, good, yeah. help you out, give you guidance and let you learn from their mistakes and hopefully avoid them and help just help you grow is really beneficial. And just trying to not put all your all your eggs in one basket. So just trying to diversify everything because all you do is SEO, that's great. But if people stop using Google, then what's gonna happen? <laughs> You're just gonna just like a lot of people focused on Facebook, which Facebook is still big, but everything shifted towards Instagram and TikTok. So you just have to not just be only on one in one place, but just try to diversify and just be persistent and don't give up. And just learn from your mistakes and grow from them because a lot of people might get discouraged and give up when times are tough. But if you could persevere and push through, that's just going to take you to the next level and get you to little by little where you're trying to be at eventually get you to that goal. And I would say finding a good product or service that's unique, not just selling t-shirts, but if you're selling t-shirts, maybe make them organic cotton t-shirts for toddlers. So you have a specific niche, not just selling the same thing that everyone else is because you could compete with them, but it just becomes much, much tougher. And if you can find something with low competition, that's going to help you really break through, penetrate that market and 
make you succeed much faster. But if you're just going after the same generic things, it's tough. And keyword finding good products could come down to researching keywords on the internet using tools like the Google Keyword Planner just to find keywords that a lot of people are searching for, but there's no product or service that's fulfilling that need that you could just tap into it. And I think that was four. So another one could be just having a good networking group foundation of other people that you could talk to and bounce ideas off of them and not just be stuck. I guess more that could go back to a mentor, but delegating would be a big one is delegating tasks and not trying to do everything, but giving tasks away that way you could free up time to focus on the more important things. Cause you want to do everything. And as a business owner, you wear a lot of hats, but you can't do everything. And there's only 24 hours in that day. So you can't just be working all day long. You have to give some of that stuff off, which is tough, but once you do, it's much, much better. That's fantastic. Um, Brandon, if the people are listening to this podcast, the entrepreneur, and they want, they, they, they know that the website is not performing as they should be, and they know that they have weak on the SEO part of it, how they can contact you and how the process works so you actually can help them to get there faster. Yeah, so I created a special gift for everybody. If you go oh, to great. my website, yeah, if you go to seooptimizers.com, that's S E O O P T. I M I Z E R S dot com forward slash gift. And you can find that gift there along with my contact information and a bunch of classes I've done over the years. I have thrown up for free. So you can see step by step how to do a lot of stuff that we talk about. And also, if they want a free website consultation or analysis, I'm happy to check out their website from an SEO point of view for free. And they can book some time on my calendar there as well. That's fantastic because, especially for e commerce, right? The people don't realize that, you know, if you're, if you have an e-commerce website, right. And you are selling X amount, right. Um, to have a good SEO policy, what it's going to do is give you more visibility and give you more sales. And if you're going to have more sales, you're going to have more revenue. You have plenty budget to hire a consultant to help you that I think that sometimes, uh, with the e-commerce, um, uh, the people, um, that they are so concerned about the uh, conversion, the abandonment rate, and all these target that all, the, all these metrics that we usually analyze when we are running an e-commerce. But um, sometimes the entrepreneur don't realize that you know if you can save a lot of money in advertising by having an, a good, very good uh, organic SEO um, solution in your company, right? That is going to give you more visibility and more sales. I, if I tell you, a lot of people text me and write me and, and I'm telling them, guys, how you find out? How you find me? And they always say online. And I'm like, you know what I mean? That's, that's the answer that they said. No, we find you online. So uh, obviously, these are clients and, and opportunity that comes to you that, that is already once you do the, the, the right SEO. And, um, and 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 design the, the right solution that can bring you an, an extra an extra amount of client that you that you were not counting on if that makes sense is that correct mm -hmm. yep that's going to get you new eyeballs on you new people coming finding you and discovering you that wouldn't have otherwise been able to find you before so the internet is great that's connected everybody and gives everyone a voice and a way to just get themselves out there and start businesses and it's been amazing. Yeah. And with that note, thank you everyone for joining us. Thank you so much, Brandon, for your opportunity and for the all this knowledge that you share with us. And remember, if you are running an e-commerce record, you're running a website, have a look deeply at your SEO optimization because it's really important that um, that you have a deep look at it because at the end of the day, we want people to find you. And we always need to have balance, right? So I get it that some of you can be doing uh, advertising, right? But there is a balance always in the, into the advertising and the organic way. It has to be balanced because at the end of the day, with the advertising, especially uh, some companies have become now really, really expensive after COVID advertising online. Yeah, you have to be very careful because you spend a lot of money, yeah? And uh, and now companies are looking at more strategy, more organic strategy to actually 
uh, develop the direct to consumer business and, and the B2B side of it. So thank you so much, Brandon, for the opportunity. And everybody listening, you can you can go visit his website and download this this free gift. And so for everyone uh, watching this podcast now, see you in our next episode, how brave entrepreneurs break this wall and achieve the first million in sales. Bye for now. Follow us for more interviews with world's most influential, audacious entrepreneurs that overcame challenges and adversity, providing you with the blueprint of how they sold their first million so you can grow your business exponentially.